there's another way to do matrix vector multiplication that involves the rows of A rather than the columns. In this video, we introduce it. Suppose we're multiplying a matrix A by a vector X. The matrix A is M by N, and the vector X is N by 1, so the product is defined. We know how to do this multiplication, but in this video, we'll introduce another way to think about it. We'll introduce this method via concrete example. Let's multiply this matrix by this vector. As a result, will be 2 by 1. It will have as many rows as the matrix does. And as mentioned, this method is row-based. We'll use the first row of the matrix to get the first row of the product and the second row of the matrix to get the second row of the product. How? To get the first row, we take the first row of A. And we write the entries of the vector under them. In order. So here's the first row, here's the vector, and we'll multiply each of these in turn. Then we add the results together to get the second row. We take the second row of A. We write the elements of the vector below that and in order. We multiply down. And we add the resulting numbers. So we're claiming this product is that vector one, negative three. 
Let's compare this with our previous method. We should take each column multiply it by a vector entry and add the results together. So the first column times one is one, one. The second column times three is six zero. The third column times negative two is negative six, negative four. And if we add these three vectors together, We do indeed get the same vector that we got using this new method. Once you get used to it, I think most students find it faster to do this, um, to use this method when they're working by hand. The downside, at least from my perspective, is that it frequently provides little insight into why linear algebra operates the way it does. Consider a previous theorem. A vector B is a linear combination of the columns of A if and only if AX equals B has a solution. So when we define AX to be a linear combination of the columns of a, this theorem is basically trivial. If we define AX as do these things to the rows and add them together, this theorem is a lot more cryptic. 
It's very hard to look at this definition of multiplication and see why this theorem should be true. At least I can say on a personal level that when I took this course, the professor and textbook both defined multiplication in this way, and I spent a lot of years not understanding linear algebra as a result. In this video, we defined matrix vector multiplication in another alternate way. This new method is frequently faster when working with small matrices by hand, at least once you get used to it, but does not always provide a lot of useful intuition.